Welcome to our 500 subscriber special. Today we are going to do a very special fly. It's going to be a tandem fly. There will be a trailing hook behind. Some call it a stinger hook. The tail is interchangeable with my special design. With this clip, which you can find in fly fishing stores, this is what they tie at the end of their tippet and they can change flies just by clipping the fly in and out. This will be attached at the end. And because of that, you can freely change the size of the stinger hook, the type of stinger hook. And for me, sometimes I switch over to a spinner blade. Okay, let's get to it. First, we need to take this out of the vise. This is, a, I think it's a size 2 VMC jig head. I painted the jig head and added some eyes. But yeah, just leave it in the comments if you guys want to see how to do that. I've not found the catch rate to increase that much with the eye or without the eye. So what I've done, if you can see, this is how we're going to attach the clip. Okay? There's no way this can come out because it's a metal to metal attachment. We just need to stabilize this, which is what we're going to do next for this application. I like to use gel spun thread. The difference is it's made of aramid fibers, the same fiber that your braided fishing line is made of. So for the diameter, it is very, very strong. Okay, bring this up here, kind of align it where you want i like to put the back of the clip in line with the barb of the hook then just go around a few times remember to put at least some moderate amount of pressure not too much we're just stabilizing the clip so you can do a bit of adjustment like this to make it sit in line with the hook shank i also like to make some under wraps just makes it a bit more stable so just by wrapping you can see how how tight this thing is sitting already now when i want to realign it to be correctly in line there is a lot of resistance so that's good when that's done just tie off maybe five wraps okay the thing about gel spun line it's pretty slippery on the on the hook shank if you're unfortunate this whole thing can rotate around the hook shank i just have to look for my super glue where the hell is it a lot of my line materials disappear because of the peacock bass that I get. They have this sandpaper like mouth and when they get a grip on your materials, it's very easy for them to pull them out. So that's why I reinforce all my ties with super glue and that helps tremendously, believe me. Okay, super glue, I found it. The thing with super glue is never add too much. It will saturate the threads, even with just a little bit when you buy the, the low viscosity version. Okay. So now just tie whatever pattern you want because this can be just clipped in. And don't worry about this part opening up because if you have set your drag correctly for BFS, it should not be so strong that this will open up. In my experience, it has never happened for me. In fact, sometimes the stinger hook gets snagged and if your line and leader is strong enough, you won't be able to open this either even when it's snagged, which I've tried. I've lost the whole jig even though only the rear hook was snagged. It was just right in front of me. I could see the rear hook snack. I tried to free it. I thought I, I would open the, the clip, but it didn't happen. So these are strong enough. Don't buy too small. This is, a, I think, the largest size. Switching back to my normal thread. Tie this on at the head. Let's just tie a basic streamer pattern all the way here. And we are going to guess it. Super glue. Just a little bit. Okay, so remember the materials we want it. Not too long because you get in the way of the stinger hook and particularly so if the stinger hook also has a tail which is what we're going to do today. I'm going to put this iced up for a bit of flash. In my experience, less is always more. Add just enough to make it serve its purpose. Normally when I see new fly tires put way too much material, it can and usually does impede the action of the material underwater thereby affecting the bite rate okay so when i cut i don't cut two or three at a time because it, it gives you a very abrupt shape what i normally do is i'll cut one shorter so that they are like staggered a more natural result next polar duck all these materials you can find at your local fly fishing shop bought mine at another fly story that's the name of the shop that i always go to right we're going to do dubbing this is a dubbing spinner you don't have to go and buy one, it's just a lot more easier if you have a dubbing spinner. Okay, those who don't have and don't know how to dub or don't want to dub, you can just tie any fly. You can tie a normal streamer like my Arctic Fox streamer, that's fine. Just make it shorter. Let's do a dubbing loop. So what's a dubbing loop? 
you pull the thread anchor one end anchor the other end of the dubbing spinner pull up and that is your dubbing loop but today i'm going to make it longer so this will be our frame so two wraps and very importantly you need to go around to close the loop you know there'll be a gap there and there'll be problems capturing the material so bring it back to where we started then we can go back here if your fly vise has a bobbin rest use it okay we are ready to insert the polar flash but before that there's another tip i want to share with you so last time i used to put ferro wax just to help to hold the materials on the thread while i work with it this time i found that magic stick is much better because it's also an adhesive and when it dries it helps to hold the materials in place just like traditional dubbing wax does and this one dries it cures so it makes a more permanent bond so take a polar flash about this much okay we're gonna do this in stages open the loop insert it in okay that's your first one take some more insert it don't worry about being messy right now the thing about dubbing is that you can stack colors and even materials so just to show you i'm going to put a bit of red polar flash to make a color ending off with white okay so the whole thing looks like this and now you can kind of adjust how dense you want the materials to be i like it a little bit less dense like i say always air on the side of less material than too much material next stage i'm going to cut it to length so this side i don't want too much this will give you the body this side will give you how fat your body is going to be this side will determine how long the fibers are going to stretch so what i'm doing now is i'm making the red fibers just slightly shorter so they can hide underneath these ones this white one later on gives like a translucent effect which i love also for the front of the fly i'm gonna make it not too bushy okay now we we'll adjust the length i like to make it uniform okay here's the fun part we're going to spin and you see what happens you just made your own chenille and then i'll take my dubbing brush I'll start to ease the fibers out all the loose ones are coming out but those who are captured inside the thread those are going to to stick much better i don't want too fluffy of a fly okay see how nice the chenille is now i'm going to I'm just moving everything to one side okay time to so as you spin Kind of slowly make the fibers sit towards the back just push it with your finger oh okay so that happens not very often when your thread break and use your hand okay keep going so you see we're building a body now we're coming to the red part and now we're covering the red with the white to make it a little bit translucent almost done so what you do now with this broken end here pinch down make sure this is not moving okay get this thread hold the end wrap try not to trap too many fibers okay i also like to go kind of twist the thread around so that it's more secure okay make sure you are wrapping on this side of the thread otherwise you won't be securing it at all okay time to snip it off go as close as you can done and now we will tie off the fly why so many turns i'm just building the diameter of the collar that's all that you don't need that many turns pull tension the thread and then just okay what's next remember the comb now you don't use this side you use this side the comb side just comb everything make everything face backwards okay in this state is already fishable it has enough action in the water to attract fish but we are going to make use of the clip and make this into a tandem fly okay so we're going to take this off okay stinger hook one thing you need to take note of it's good to put a plastic bead like this what does this plastic bead do 
it's not foolproof, but it helps to prevent this hook from fouling with the hook in front of it. Okay, tying on. If you don't want to add a bead, that's fine. But it adds a bit of flash, the additional attractor, if you will. With your fingers, push it as far forward as possible, and then do this. Build a thread wall behind. But of course, I always like to start with flash. So let's put some of the same flash that we use for the main body that will keep things uniform. So just enough of this material like before. Sometimes it's good to have a bit of the flash extending past your materials. So what are we going to do now? We, if we tie just a tail here, that's good enough. But let's do a bit of dubbing so that the front of the fly looks more uniform with the back of the fly. You don't want too different of a tail. Unless you use a spinner spinner blade now, that's a different story. So, we don't need it very long this time around. Okay, you see, it easily just comes loose, right? If I were to put it on my bobbing rest now and I start turning, it might do this. So one of my habits when I'm doing uh, dubbing and the head is very small is I will just do a half hitch. That way it doesn't just hop off the head. Okay, same thing as before. Magic stick. Polar dub. You really, really, really want a sparse tail so that the action under the water is not dampened by too much material. Yeah, I've done it many times where I put too much material. It looks really good on dry land. It feels really fluffy and substantial in the hand. Then once it hits the water, very little action. Oh, by the way, you don't always have to cut one side. You can just go ahead and wrap it without cutting. You get a, you get more fluff. Okay, pin. So you see, chenille. Don't have to buy chenille. You can make your own just by learning how to dub sometimes i throw a bit of crystal flash in here solar flash a bit more sparkle in the tail after a few rounds of the dubbing brush whatever is coming out has already come out you do the same thing as before move everything to the left wrap it to the right and we're done all that's left is to secure this go around once twice maybe even three times Lock it in. Lock, lock, lock. Just the tiniest, tiniest drop of super glue. Dubbing brush. That's the tail. Okay, you wanna do you wanna clip it on this way? Or you wanna clip it on this way? It's up to you. I normally clip it on this way. So five hundred subscriber special tandem fly. If you haven't done so, please subscribe. Well, this thing in the water, I tell you, is magic. This thing moves not just left to right, up and down as well. And with every jerk, just, it, it kind of amplifies what the material in the front is doing. When you jig, this material will flare upwards. This one, the whole tail flares as well. Very nice. This pattern has caught me a lot, a lot of fish. So do try this pattern. I'm pretty excited about it. See you on the next video.